all you're doing is you're diagramming the premises because diagramming something represents it as if it were true. And then we find out whether the conclusion also has to be true or whether it's possible for it to be false when the premises were true. We do that because we're trying to figure out whether the argument is valid. Now, we've got this diagram here, and our conclusion is that all A are C. So we look at the diagram and we ask ourselves, now, if something is in the A category, in the A circle, does it also have to be in the C circle? Or can there be something that's in the A circle that's outside of the C circle? Well, let's take a look. The B circle doesn't really matter here. All right, so something that's in the A circle, it can't be here, it can't be here, it can't be here, it can't be anywhere that's shaded out, because nothing can be in the shaded out area. That's what that represents. But it can be in this open area here. There's a blank. And that's the only place it can be. In the different sections, that's the only one left available to us. So. We know that something would have to be there in the middle, in the intersection among all three of the categories. So all A or C, well, let's see, that area, the only area left open in the A circle, is also in the C circle. It looks like anything that's an A does have to be a C. So there's no way for the premises to be true while the conclusion is false. This is, in fact, a valid argument, and that's what shows it to us. There's no way for the premises to be true, just like we've diagrammed, and the conclusion to be false. It's just not allowed. All right. Now, I think we'll cover next time uh, E claims, and then we'll try to move on to I claims and O claims and diagramming those in arguments.